just a thought. You don't get nervous when situations happen in life that seem like it's troublesome and scary. You just find answers and solutions. I don't get fearful. I don't, I don't never get fearful. I've never been in a situation in my life where I got fearful. I don't get fearful. I don't believe in fear. Fear come from Satan. I believe in divine fear, of course. But that divine fear is, uh, is boldness and is purity, is obedience, is consistency. But I don't believe in fear. So things that happen... I don't get nervous. I just find solutions. The wiser level of life is not pondering on an issue, but it's finding the answer to the issue. What could be done to fix this? Not the problem being exalted, but what can be done to fix this problem? If you look for answers, see the disciples was looking at a storm. Jesus was looking at a peace be still. The people was looking at a lion's den. Daniel was looking at a deliverer. He saw God as his deliverer. So the wisdom for life is not looking at what is the problem. The wisdom is locating the answer. So I don't get fearful. A lot of people in Texas, their, their power is going off and stuff like that. That's not concerning me at all. I'm not concerned about things that happen in this realm of life because they can be fixed. They can be fixed. Everything can be fixed. I function from another world, from this angle of life, it'll never dictate from this angle in which I'm in, the heavenly places. It dictates everything else. And patience. I'm the type of person you have to understand that when you have faith, you also have to have patience, which means that when you do know that there will be a supply coming to you from the heavenlies. You have to set your mind with longevity until it comes. You can't say, oh, it better come now or else. No. You ride the storm out. And you get the crown in the end. That happens for everything. Now, there are some storms that you can speak to and stop. There are some storms that you're supposed to ride out. Remember, King Jesus said, I have to drink this cup. He told Peter he was Satan because Peter told him, don't drink from the cup. Same way in life, everybody will have crosses and moments where you persevere. One thing that I'm catching about this cold air is this. There's freeze. There's snowing. It's snowing all over. We got big snow. Man, it looked like Antarctica in this mug. I saw five black niggas running. <laughs> running in some sketches. I wanted to say, hey, we black, man. She, we scared of heat. Extra heat and extra cold. That's what <laughs> we black. We scared of extra heat. We scared of extra cold. Everything that become extra. If it's not pleasurable, we don't want that extra. What you doing out here? Five of y'all. Y'all got ex Eskimo spirit. The five of y'all. Y'all supposed to be black. Y'all in a black body. What's going on? You ain't got no jacket on. You got on a sweatshirt. Think that you LeBron James Sr. We black. Get yourself back inside. 
you know, only black men, black men only running around when they got an arguing wife. <laughs> Somebody somewhere there want to cook the ribs and mac and cheese. And somebody didn't want to pit the, the pig feet on the pot. <laughs> Say, I'm going to tell you something like this. I seen some more people up there walking their dogs. Who told you that your dog want to be out there in the cold? Who? That's, that's doggy abuse. Who told you that your dog want to take a walk in the freezing? That's that's pe people so disrespectful. That dog was minding their business, trying to be cozy. They took the dog outside. Man, I'm glad I'm not no dog. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not no dog, man, because when you a dog, they just do what they want to you. I thank God that God didn't put me in a pet body. You see what I'm saying? You, some of y'all need to thank God that you're a woman. Now, you might be a cat woman, but still, baby, you might be a bird woman and it might be a bird man, but at least you're a man, you're a woman, you're in a, that type of body. Because these people that's, that's be having dogs, they be treating their dog wrong. That dog didn't want to come out in the cold. And the dog walking in the snow, the dog feet cold. Where the doggy shoes? Where the doggy boots at? That's sad. Like people, people be cruel. You got that dog walking on ice. Saints, you think about that. Ain't that something? They don't think about that. Why, why, why would you bring a pet out? Pets get cold. Man. And that dog, they be walking. I'm telling you, something wrong with man. Something is wrong with man's mind. God didn't intend for it like that. Something wrong with man's mind. And people be walking throughout their neighborhood, calm in their jacket, and the dog got there exposed to the coldness. That's... <sighs> Saints, one thing about Adam that you probably never hear preached is that Adam cared for animals. Remember, he loved the animal. He loved the fish. He loved the, the, the mammals. He loved the creeping things. He was the one with the wisdom for every creature. So he cared about them. But you look at today. Like, why does people do stuff like that? Why does like, OK, you love your animal, correct? That's what your theology is. So why wouldn't you think it's cold outside? So let my creature be cozy it just shows you so saints there's something wrong with the mind all the more you have to as a child of God receive a sound mind so that you don't automatically step into that type of thinking of missing solutions and answers find answers find answers Find answers. All the more you have to be cautious that you don't take on that mindset that people have where they are numb and blind to things that they should be observing. Since in my life, I've often wondered how do people don't see what I see? But then I also remember I took the time to seek God out. Many people don't do that. Like even right now, some of you are right now, you can't see. OK, you can't go to work. It's cold outside. Some of your stuff might be getting canceled. But what is this extra time for? What's the extra time for? Why do you have extra time on your hands? Obviously, this is a moment for you to praise God. Thank God. Look for things that you've been missing that God wanted you to observe. Observe. Same way with this whole coronavirus thing. When this thing hit, so many people have time on their hands, but they're not catching. This is a time for me to seek God. This is a time for me to look for moments that I have missed because I was too preoccupied with this and that. But now everything has so much cautions on there. So now I can look up because my redemption draweth not. Redemption is not just rapture. Redemption means that something is being bought back. Your focus needs redemption. 
Your praise life needs redemption. Your thanksgiving, your patience, your submission, your fire for God needs redemption. Things need to be taken back constantly. So when we see all these different fragments of your life being slowed down because of what's happening, that's a time for you to look and say, what needs to be taken back? We can't miss that scripture, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Redeeming the time, that means I'm taking back the time. I'm looking at time and saying it was wrongly spent before, but now I'm going to correct it. It was wrongly done previously, but now I'm going to correct it. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. So many things that occur. And God wants you to find answers. Do you know that God hides answers from you? He hides answers from you. You know why he hides answers from you? Because he wants you to find them. When Abel came to this earth, God didn't automatically just let him know all things. He had to find answers. He had to find out God loves for me to be a sower. I'm created to be a sower and Abel sowed. Esther had to find answers. Okay, God want me to listen to Mordecai. Okay, God want me to audition to become queen. Okay, God want me to be the solution. Find answers. Jonathan didn't know that in the future he would be protecting someone from his dad. But now he's protecting David from his dad. He has found answers. You have to find answers constantly. Constantly find answers. Don't get nervous or fearful or anxious. Just find answers. I don't have a job. I don't know why I'm going to make money. There's an answer. There's an answer. It's good that you don't have, don't know, because this, this is an opportunity for you to seek. What is God saying to me? Oh, you didn't, you, you want to know what God is saying to you, but you haven't created an atmosphere for him to speak. You think that he wants to talk to you just because you're ignorant? You think that God wants to reveal mysteries to you just because you're lacking? No, that's not the equation to unlock God. You see how so many times it's so easy for a popcorn. But have you discerned when God is in the mode of pot roast? Because popcorn could be popped immediately. Pot roast has to be cooked thoroughly. And the spirit is saying, what will you show me as an exchange for me to talk to you? Is your attention set? Is your energy set? Are you focused? Are you hungry? What are you doing for me to unlock secrets to you? What are you showing me? Are you a wandering woman? Wandering woman don't have much power. Wandering men are not kings.